Dr. Kemi Lawrence for Kemi Talks Media. It's Sunday, the 3rd of November, 2024. Let's talk about why I don't cover politics. A lot of you keep asking me why I don't cover political news. Many of you don't know my early years in journalism. I'm going to be 31 years in this profession on February 9th. I just celebrated my 30th year this year. Now, when you're a journalist, you either work for a media house or you work for yourself, independent journalism. In the old days, independent journalists got money to work from funds, many journalism foundations, NGOs, and funding so you can get to do your work and not use your own money to do that work. Pretty much my 11 years in Nigeria, I used my money to do everything. I had no salary. And I always depended on donations. And the donations were very slow because I was not the favorite journalist. Many people hated me. And many people vindicated me years after I said something they didn't like and I was correct. Now, I don't care about Nigerians. I really don't. I really don't. The Nigerians that dealt with my work at home ruined my career. And I'm going to say straight up. Many people were told to come to my house and beat me up. They were told by their favorite celebrities to post my number and my address. They posted it all over social media. So that's the reason I can never return to that country. I've changed my name. I've moved to a new continent. I'm moving on with my life and I've done that. Okay. Now, there are some people who like my work and they always donate to my work and they raise funds for me. Okay, I left journalism for eight months. I came back. And those people have been mostly from Nigeria. I know my fans. Okay, I have people I call followers and I have people I call fans. Not everyone is my fan. Some people are followers. Now, on that political note, all right, some of you are asking why I haven't covered anything about Kamala and Trump. I don't care. Okay, I don't like politics. It's not my news speak. And I just watch. When the president comes in, I'll work with the presidency or whoever I have to work with in the governance section and how it affects the people. But the whole politics, campaigning for people and all that. And some of you in Nigeria even got me confused with another Kemi who was campaigning for Tinumbu and abusing Peter Obi. You know, this is where you need to focus. And many of you are not focused. Okay. Uh, Kemi, so speaking about another Kemi, this is yet another Kemi, Kemi bad enough. And she is now the leader of the British Conservative Party. Okay, so that's like saying she's the leader of PDP or she's the leader of APC and all that. Now, the situation with Kemi, she wants no affiliation with Nigeria. And I don't blame her. I see people are abusing her and all that. Okay, she doesn't want anything to do with Nigeria. Okay, she moved to the UK when she was younger. All her primary schools in Nigeria, she blocked them out of her CV and everything. She doesn't have to identify as Nigeria. And that's the kind of person I am. Nigeria treated me bad, dragged me down. You know, when Davido was calling me a mad woman, all oh, your pussy, cheap drug user, it became a regular name for me in Nigeria. And people still call me those things today. Okay, people drag people down. When Linda Ikeji was calling me a gun runner, that I had guns in my house and I was threatening bloggers with it. Okay, she was giggling when she was apologizing on Twitter. Oh, and I thought I liked you, blah, 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 blah. All these things cost people things. Okay, Davido cost me my reputation. Linda, they were wondering why I was exposing her when she was carrying a fake pregnancy and all that. Okay, Linda cost me 30 million naira. Etisala was about to sign me for a data deal because I was the Daniel Rigger of that time in 2011, 2012. When I say Daniel Rigger of that time, I was the only one that had opinions. And I gave that opinion journalism straight to Nigerians and everybody would tune in just to see what I've posted next, okay, on Facebook. Instagram was very, very new and Twitter was there. It was mostly on Twitter and Facebook, okay? So now I started this opinion journalism. Everybody's a critic now. Blessing CEO is a critic. She's giving information about relationships. Saida Baj is giving her opinion. VDM came in giving his opinion. Um, Daniel Rega came in. You know, everybody's a critic now. D1, comedian. You know what I mean? I pioneered all these things. Many things I pioneered in Nigeria. But at the end of it, for people to bully me, I had to leave all of you back there. I will not 
I will not deal with animals. I will not. I'm sorry. So with Kemi, don't blame her. She wants nothing to do with Nigeria. She's like me. If I go to the U.S. Congress now, if I decide I want to return to America and um, go to the U.S. Congress or run in my state, Maryland, to the state Senate or any kind of political position, I'm not going to refer to myself as a Nigerian. No way. No fucking way. I'm not going to have Abike Dabiri praising me, you know, because I became this. This is what Abike Dabiri does. And that's her job. Diaspora minister or something. When Madhu became, um, what did Madhu even become in Canada? Attorney general or something for a province. They celebrate you when you're abroad and you're doing well and everything. Okay. When I got that award from the White House in 1997 and the governor's office and the mayor's office, the drug abuse stuff I did, that got me my green card in 1997. When I did all that stuff, no one celebrated me in Nigeria. Okay. Because I didn't want myself known to people in Nigeria at that time. Nigerians didn't know me until I came home from Canada and I didn't want myself known. The basic bottom line is that if they can't celebrate you, when you're in Nigeria, they must not celebrate you when you're outside Nigeria. Congratulations to Kemi, by the way. And Shei Makinde is somebody that I campaigned for. Now, let me tell you about that. I'll show you a separate video on that, okay? I get a lot of questions about this whole, why do you not cover politics? Why do you not do this? I didn't campaign or for anybody or cover anything. And like I said, they got me confused with another Kemi there. But... Shayima Kinde, I get this question about why didn't he give you a job in Oyo State? Why did you leave Oyo State when he became governor? All these questions. If they gave me a job in Oyo State, I mean, that is partly why I don't talk to my father anymore. My dad was behind a lot of that. Every single governor did not hire me. And he was behind a lot of that. Don't hire her. Da, 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 da. I don't want to even talk about that. It's so fucking annoying. Because many of you say, oh, if I were a lawyer, I would have gone here, I would have gone there. Look at Tony Fajola, all these people I'm older than. Tony Fajola that came to pick me at the airport in 2006, telling me he's the chief of staff of Lagos State. These guys have become governors, ministers, everything. But when your own father can't empower you and push you down, you don't want anything to do with them. Fathers are supposed to empower their daughters. You know, I went on the streets from door to door, house to house, to tell people to change their vote on election day because many Nigerians in Ibadan did not even know that they had had a meeting overnight about how all the political parties will merge so that they can vote for Shei Makinde against the APC candidate, which I believe was Akala at that time. So we were going door to door telling people in Agodi everywhere. Somebody in Shei's cabinet knows what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Ibadan pride. That guy will tell you, we all campaigned for Shei on the streets. The woman selling corn, barley, everybody. But when this guy won, I never got to see him. I went to his house like everybody did. I was at the gate. When they opened the gate, I entered. It's like I wasn't really that important. While I was there, my father even arrived. Okay, with his own entourage, and they were taking him out of the car and everything. I just was so irritated. And I left. Like, I can't be begging people for jobs. When the NDLE and I were working together, I sent a letter to your state government. You know, these are not things I should be doing. <laughs> these are things that you should have connections to. So I see you guys sitting down there thinking that because my name is Olun Lawyer. Olun Lawyer name harmed me more than it helped me. So I needed to get away from that nonsense. I've not seen my parents or spoken to anybody since 20, what is it, 2016 to 2018. You know, I don't have any family in Nigeria. I don't have anything in Nigeria. Everything's closed. You know what I mean? Sold everything left. Nigeria harmed me too much. So, guys, I don't do any political reporting and all that stuff, you know. Everybody, good luck to them in what they do. I've done my part.